what if I told you that there's a black country based organization supporting local community groups to build creative confidence. Welcome to the Creative Communities podcast where we'll share the experiences of some of the groups who have already benefited. I'm your host Laura, the CBC Creative Advisor for Dudley and in this episode we're talking to the brilliant artist Roots and she's speaking about the Friends of Abbey Street Park Jubilee mural project that took place in Dudley. So first of all, Roots, can you please tell us a little bit about yourself and your background as an artist? Yes, of course. I have been a freelance illustrator since about 2017, so I went full-time in December. Before that, I was working part-time as a graphic designer. So still working in a very creative world, albeit very kind of linear and logical, working for an academy trust. I've got a degree in illustration and visual communication. So that was something that I always wanted to take further and have as my career. So as I said, 2017, I went full-time and I just really threw myself into as many commissions as possible. I love kind of the whole variety that comes with illustration. So I wanted to kind of do everything if I, if I possibly could. So murals is a wonderful thing. Um, And I do a lot of t-shirt designs and used to do a lot of window designs and a big chunk of my career was live art before COVID hit. And then obviously after the pandemic, I kind of, did a bit of a pivot and did a lot more workshop related stuff, which obviously then took me into a big kind of community space. And that's kind of how I ended up collaborating and working with you guys as well. So yeah, super varied, no days the same. And I absolutely love it. Brilliant. That's so interesting. And you've touched on it a little bit already. What inspired you to collaborate in this particular community art project with the Friends of Abbey Street Park? So I was initially uh, contacted by yourself and you mentioned to me that you have been approached by the uh, Friends of Abbey Street Park and they had an idea for a project and I know that you guys were kind of putting them in contact and, and showing them, you know, various artists that work in the community and the different things and we basically were a match, <laughs> which was quite nice. Um, And then just meeting up with them, hearing all about them and exactly what they wanted to do. I knew that I could do something that would be fun, engaging and would hopefully, you know, involve the community as well as the, the group, the Friends of Abbey Street Park as well. So it was all very kind of relaxed and casual, which I think is a really nice way to start a project, you know, kind of no pressure in, in a nice kind of relaxed environment. That's perfect. They're, they were such a lovely group and I they were so impressed by your work. I remember when I showed them some examples of your work immediately, it was like, we really, really want to work with Roots. So that was, it's, it's really magical and beautiful when that happens. And just having a little bit of a chat about the project overview. So could you very briefly describe the Creative Communities Project? that you were involved in? Uh, What was its main goal and what was its theme? So the main goal was to basically brighten up a dark, dull area of a um, green, beautiful kind of football wreck area that was used by the community on a daily basis. You know, there's you get school children walking through to go from A to B. Dog walkers are plenty, um, you know, and it's just generally a big family space. And it's also a space that is, you know, enjoyed by families and teenagers and, and everyone, essentially. And it was quite a dark, dingy space. It was about 70 foot wide wall by about four foot high. It had a bit of a kind of water issue. So it was a bit swampy as well. Um, so I think they just kind of wanted something that was going to brighten up the area and because we had the jubilee coming up and we basically wanted to have you know quite a a royal theme but not too over the top essentially brilliant i mean the group were really motivated to clean that space up weren't they and they really took it upon themselves to clear up the swampy issue i think they got the council involved 
um to to do to deal with the drainage issue and and all of that kind of stuff so i know that they were really really motivated and and that you work together really well to make something fantastic and special and you mentioned how the group had already got some ideas so they already knew that they kind of wanted to run with a jubilee theme I just wondered, could you please explain to us a little bit more about that collaboration and the role that you played in bringing the community's ideas to life? So basically, this project is what I would call um, a legacy mural. And I've done over the years lots of different types of legacy murals. And I kind of just see myself as um, a visual translator when it comes to these kind of projects. So I approach them all the same. We have an ideas creation workshop, so very informal. I bring a few collaborative sheets and it basically just has a few key words that are special and important to this particular group. So the friends of Abbey Street Park, um, I'd had a little bit of conversation, a bit of back and forth with Christine um, beforehand and she told me a little bit about the group. So I was able to put these little keywords on sheets and then when I met up with them first of all we had coffee and biscuits which was very nice so we were all very relaxed and we were just able to get the sheets out and kind of encourage everyone to do a little something on each sheet so they would respond to a word of you know community and um, you know like stories and historical points so everyone would kind of have their input whether it was a doodle a poem or just you know just writing words and bullet pointing um, and then I would kind of from the conversations that we have and from the, what's been taken from the sheets I would take that home and try and find a theme that kind of runs through it and sometimes it doesn't have to be one kind of whole image that kind of fits together because I think from my graphic design days it's quite nice to be able to collage pieces together so that it still tells a narrative, but it can be, you know, each image can kind of represent its own separate thing. And that's the kind of direction that we did go with this in the end. And if I remember correctly, please correct me if I'm wrong, Roots, I believe that you did some handout sheets to go to members of the community that couldn't attend the Absolutely. workshop. Yeah. Could you tell us a bit yeah. about that as well? Because it was so inclusive. Yeah, of course. So um, basically, I always want... A, after speaking to the group and Christine I realized that it wasn't just the friends of Abbey Street Park that are are part of the community like they have so many other groups there's lots of schools library so there's all these really important hubs but obviously not everyone can make it on you know say a Tuesday afternoon so I just provided some really simple worksheets that were basically a more simplified form of what we did in the physical workshop. And so it was just a way for people to kind of highlight things that were important to them. And we got some really lovely responses from some of the local primary schools in particular, where they'd done some gorgeous illustrations and they were really, really lovely. And it was just a really nice way to see the young people and the teachers and the community get involved and have their say, even though they might not necessarily have been there on the day. I mean, it's so great that you spread the net that wide and really did engage with the community. It's really, yeah. really fantastic. So talking about challenges and triumphs of the project, was there a particular challenge or anything unexpected that happened that you had to overcome? The, the state of the wall <laughs> was, as I said, it's kind of something that had been, you know, it was just there. It was a big wall. I'm sure it had some kind of purpose. But over the years, you know, it was quite damaged. It was just like a big club of concrete. <laughs> you know, it was a bit unsightly. And I think one of the main reasons that they wanted a big mural on there was because it was being targeted by tags and some not particularly that great to look at maybe a bit offensive but also as as we mentioned like the friends of Abbey Street Park have put so much work into it getting it prepared like I said there was quite a big swampy area as well so just kind of we we had like a couple of scheduled dates that got moved along purely because of the state of the wall and the state of the ground and they needed a bit more work to be done but the group 
did so much and they really did put so much of their own spare time and energy into it, which just made us all really want to do it even more, I think. And then the other thing to note was that during the consultation consultation period and actually creating the mural, one of the members of the group actually passed away, which was obviously very horrible and traumatic for the group. And having met Paul myself and seeing his input, it just kind of put a fire up me even more to kind of want to make sure that I really not just left a legacy for the group, but also left a legacy for Paul as well. He had quite a that there was one like contribution that he made loads during the group but he really wanted the whippets to be incorporated so I really wanted to make sure that the whippets were there and that they were right and then we put little tags on the dogs that had his and his wife's initials on them as a as a little nod but then we also actually put a silhouette of him in there as well so it was just a real subtle and hopefully respectful nod to him and the work that he does. And he's in the silhouette of him. Um, I just stenciled it on and he's holding a shovel because he's done loads of work in the local area. He did a lot of the heavy lifting and the leg work, making sure that the landscape and everything was up to par with, with the vision and making everything right. So, yeah, it was it was trying to be as sensitive as possible because I knew it was hard for the group, but also, you know, making sure that, you know, who who looked at the wall knew that, that that was Paul and that was a little nod to him. That's so beautiful. And it's such a lovely way to be remembered as well. And I remember the, the group when the mural had been com- completed telling me how important that was to them, oh. you know, to remember him like that. Really beautiful. Well, my next question was because we've gone from the challenge and then I was going to ask what brought you the most satisfaction or pride, but hearing you just speak about the memorial part I'm, I'm guessing yes that was it yeah all the way all the way 100 fantastic and how do you feel that this creative communities project impacted the local community artistically and socially I actually I'm really chuffed you ask this question actually because whilst we were painting the mural every day dog walkers as I mentioned are plenty school children going to school coming back from school um, and people just you know spending a bit of quality time out in the sunshine everyone would come up and talk to me about the project you know curiosity what you're doing some people thought I was <laughs> kind of adding to the taggings and they wanted when I actually mentioned about the the project and that it was you know kind of a legacy for the locals it created so much conversation. As I mentioned, the, the whole concept and design itself is snippets of stories, um, you know, community kind of celebrations and, you know, obviously the Queen and, and all of that sort of stuff. So by talking to people, especially some of the younger children, I was able to kind of spread these nostalgic stories that meant so much to the Abbey Street Park group. So it was really lovely to kind of instill these little bits of legacy in in some of the younger generation that might that might have been lost along the way because a lot of the younger kids didn't know about you know let's say the grey lady who's a ghost that many people have seen in Ellos Hall uh, library from way back when so it was just really nice to be able to kind of tell the story and then also just knowing that it was brightening up the area so many people came over and literally would come over every day to take progress photos and and share with their family and stuff so it was just a really nice way of engaging the community but actually seeing that engagement on a daily basis and the interest I can imagine a lot of people did probably come and ask you what you were doing and if you got permission (laughs) that kind of stuff no it's it's brilliant it's such a beautiful project and I know that you went back to the group and did some touch-ups on the wall and the group were also successful in getting some additional support from the council and making sure that it had an anti-graffiti paint over it so I know that you kind of went back and kept in touch with the group and you advised about that which was super helpful I know that they were really grateful for your input on that but do you have any plans to continue 
with community arts projects? Would you, you know, have you got any plans to do more work like this in the future? Yes, 100%. I genuinely really love working with groups, uh, community groups, done more community projects since working on the Gornal one. And it's just really nice to kind of represent the community in places where sometimes things might be forgotten and lost you know it's a a really nice way of passing stories down to you know the the next generation or just brightening up an area that you know needs a bit of love so I I genuinely find it really rewarding it's really nice to kind of go to communities that you know I've lived in passed through on buses trains you know my whole life and actually get to know that little bit more about them and the people that are there so yeah it's, it's as rewarding for me as hopefully it is for the the groups that I'm working with. I know that this group in particular really appreciated you. And you've already touched on this quite a bit, Roots, but looking back on this on this project in particular, what do you feel was the most valuable lesson or insight that you've gained personally as a creative about your creative practice? Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> um, it's, it's a tough one because every project has a different kind of challenge in the way of approaching things but it's just to kind of it's to be respectful to the group that you're working with but also bear in mind that there's a wider community that you want to make sure that you're staying true to them as well not you know like I said not everyone is able to attend a meeting so to try and involve as many people as possible you you know you don't I don't want people to feel left out so to kind of be able to widen the net as you said earlier to kind of include people is just it's very important to me and so much so like after the project I created a a colouring in sheet that was then kind of hopefully distributed to the schools and the libraries so the the young people can kind of put their own stamp on the mural as well so yeah it's 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 an interesting question I probably didn't answer that one very well (laughs) No, absolutely you did. And it perfectly leads into my next question, which is, do you have any advice or encouragement for either artists or community groups that are maybe a little bit interested in doing something like this, but still a little bit nervous? It's it's, it's tough uh, when you get involved in putting your creative work out there, you know, especially with social media everyone's got an opinion these days but I think just putting yourself out there as a creative is it's the first step so whether you want to get involved in murals and you've never done a large-scale artwork before maybe start practicing at home on larger scale designs but also in just the the more general respect if you're a group like the Friends of Abbey Street Park or if you're a creative looking to put yourself out there groups such as yourself and your organization are such so important and you kind of help both sides along the way and since uh, being put in touch with you guys like especially with you in particular I feel like one I've made a friend um, but also you are I know that I can just contact you if I have a question And sometimes you might feel a little bit embarrassed to ask certain questions, but your job is to kind of help put everyone at ease and maybe point us in the right directions and not hold hands, but you kind of give us that nudge to kind of go, you can do this, or this is how you might want to fill out this form. And I just think groups, you know, that like yourselves are so important and we should just know, we should just know that you all exist, (laughs) essentially. Thank you so much, Roots. And yet that is the whole point of Creative Black Country. It is to build people's creative confidence, whether that's artists such as yourself or community groups that just want to have a go at something. And the whole point of creative communities is to do exactly what you've just said, is encourage groups to have a go at something new, pair them with artists or creatives that might be able to help them do that and just join the dots and cheer everyone on so that's that's absolutely what it's all about and you mentioned as well social media and have you seen any particularly funny or meaningful 
social media posts about your mural? Do you keep, still keep an eye on the um, I, I don't tend to follow. So once I've done a project, I don't really then go into Google and type my name and the project. <laughs> I'm not, I don't really do that. But I know, for example, when after the project was tagged up a little bit by, by some people, I, I did, I was, I did have um, some articles shared with me by local community that was aware that I'd worked on that project. So I always like to share things on my own website and on my social media, just kind of letting people know what I've been working on. And then usually I have people in the local community that might go there to see it and will send me photos. And that's really lovely to see other people enjoying my artwork and, you know, learning about that area just through through the story itself so yeah I don't really go in and do a deep dive on what I've done afterwards and I'm you know I'm quite happy for it to live its own legacy after that and if anyone wants any information on creative communities there's obviously all of the information on the creative black country website and our social media platforms where can people find out more about your beautiful work Oh, well, you can find me online. Instagram is basically my most up-to-date kind of instant. This is what I'm doing behind the scenes. Um, But I also have a website, so roots0121.co.uk. And literally, it does need updating. I'm not going to lie. But it's got all my projects on there, all my favourite ones, including working with you guys, as well as a huge events page as well, which will tell you where I am, whether I'm doing a, a street art event, a market, or doing workshops as well. So you can find me online, no problem. Instagram or, or the website is, is the best place. Brilliant. And just, just to end, what do you think is the most valuable or the most important takeaway from these brilliant creative communities projects what do you think their legacy might be oh you asked the good questions <laughs> I, I briefly mentioned it earlier I think the creative legacies particularly for this project and especially when I do public space projects is the community coming up to me in real time as I'm doing it and it creates a conversation and a dialogue and whether it's allowing maybe you know some of the older generation that might be a bit lonely and you're talking to them and we're reminiscing and we're getting nostalgic and they can remember a a landmark that might not be there anymore or a particular story or whether it's talking to the younger generation and sharing these stories with them. I think that's a really huge important part of what a legacy mural is but also it is about something for you know for example the Friends of Abbey Street Park to be proud of to know that by this group making a decision, putting their heads together and collaborating with yourselves, we've all been able to come up with hopefully what the community sees as a beautiful piece of art that everyone can enjoy. Roots, thank you so much for your time. That was amazing. Thank you. Well, that's a wrap for the Dudley episode. Be sure to check out the episodes for the other Black Country boroughs. A big thank you to Roots for their time and generosity in sharing today. And if you feel inspired to get involved with a creative communities project yourself, like the Friends of Appy Street Park did, then please check out CBC's website, which is www.creativeblackcountry.org.